Sharp Objects, Episode 4, Right. Okay, so Camille um, is having, I was always wondering about that cell phone she had. And she is always having these flashbacks of this girl who she was in the hospital with. And um, it's just, you know, just said how, you know, looking at the flashback. You know how that girl, how that girl took her life, and that was so close to could tell Camille and her were getting really close. Um, but one thing that had me was when she flashed back and saw the girl on the floor. I thought the girl just cut her wrist, you know, committed suicide that way. No, when they did a closer look, she drank. She was she drunk bleach, not bleach. I'm um, Drano, and. Because you can see, like, when the, I guess she was throwing out blood and chunks of her insides was coming out. It was next to her, and it was just a mess. And so, that triggered Camille to go into the bathroom and just start cutting herself. Camille's body is not just any type of cuts. You know, some people would just cuts and, you know, just do cuts. Her body is like a walking dictionary. It's like a... a a dictionary of her pain. You know, it's like she writes words into her body. You know, in her car, she has little needles where she's, whenever she feels a some type of way, she's, she plucks herself on, a, you know, she stuck, sticks her stuff with the needles that are in her seat, like by her seat, you know, and all of that. She has some really deep-rooted issues. And as the show goes on, it's going to start to unravel what is going on. What is the cause? What's the mystery behind all of this? Because it's really sad to see that she is so, you know, in that state still. And then she's you, and she's, she's an alcoholic. Because that girl can put away some liquor. She is an alcoholic. She drinks a bottle of Absolute every day. Puts it in her water bottle. Um, but her mother is some, I, I have to blame her mother for these issues. I really do. I have to blame her mother for them. But as we go on, like I said, I'm catching up. I'm on episode four. Tonight we watch episode five and then I'll be caught up on Sunday. We can now watch episode six. It's going to get to the point where it's, everything is starting to unfold. I like how things are unfolding because you learn more and new things each week. Um, so Camille was thinking about her and at one point she just took the phone and threw it out. And as she was driving, she saw, uh, I'm thinking it was her sister, but it was, you know, she looked, it was the one there. So it opens up with the morning. She's in the ditch or she's in the grassy area looking for something. I thought she was using the bathroom, but she went to go find the phone. Um, so she went to go find the phone that she threw out the window. Um... So she goes home and her mother is sitting there with her arm wrapped. Alan is wrapping her arm or is already wrapped. And of course she can't go to the luncheon that where Jackie is and the rest of the girls. And I think I think Adora didn't want to go in the first place. She just seemed like she's just a prude, um, stuck up person. Um, she just some she's she has her own mental issues. And so she sends Camille. She says, well, I hope you will fill in. I want you to fill in at the lunch um, that I cannot attend. And so Camille was like, you barely have a scratch, you know. And she said, well, I know there's going to be some talk. And I will hope that you will defend your mother, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Um, so she goes to the lunch and they have a little sit down. And Jackie waits for Camille to come sit next to her. And everyone's like, where's your mom? And she said, oh, she's, you know, not feeling well. But they all know it was BS. They all knew it was BS. So Camille called, you know, checks in with her boss. Now her, now the boss, I think that's his wife that is with him. Um, He has his own issues going on. I think he's sick. He got his own issues going on because he's checking in with, with him and he's at the doctor's. So he got his own stuff going on. So the next scene it shows Ama. She puts on the radio, which let me tell you something. Alan got a banging um stereo set. Oh my God, it is beautiful. So Ama plays Tupac um Mama. And I'm like, okay, look at this. So she plays Tupac and she goes over to where her mother is and she starts dancing with her mother. It seems as if 
Adora doesn't have a connection with Camille for whatever reason. And I know they're going to un unravel that soon. But with these girls that she has with Alan and she's just more connected with them. And so Camille comes in and she sees, you know, Alma and Adora dancing together. And, you know, Adora looked like she's happy and, you know, and, and at, at ease around with Alma. And it makes and, I, and it makes Camille feel some type of way, and I can understand that. I I really can. So, you know, um, the detective. I'll get his name right one of these days. I'll get it together. Camille takes the detective on a trip or a town. Well, not a trip, but on a tour through the town of Wind Gap, and she shows him different, you know, areas and different things and different stories of what happened in Wind Gap. And they come up they come up to this um shed and she remembers that shed because she came across it herself as a kid when they used to play in the woods and she started getting like little flashbacks so she left you know she just you know walked away from it for a little bit and he was like what's going on did something happen to you there and you know she didn't want to say anything so he was like I thought we was I thought you was beginning to like me. And so she walks up to him and puts her bag down and I, he went to kiss her and no, she didn't want that. So she opened her pants, stuck his hand down in her underwear so he can give her a popping. Y'all know what I'm talking about, a, a popping. And I guess she didn't want the, you know, <laughs> but they had a little finger popping moment. <laughs> And I also mentioned that in my last um, video. So it was getting intense for her because she was had his arm, had her arms around him. And I thought that was kind of weird. But hey, whatever floats her boat. And um, I guess it was getting, you know, it was feeling good to her. And then she started to bite him. And then they cut from that scene. So the sheriff... <laughs> visits Adora. Now I want to know something. It's something going on with a something had to have went on with Adora and the sheriff because Alan feels some type of way about the sheriff. So he comes and visit. Alan opens the door and he said, Well she's in bed. She's not feeling well first of all it was Alma. Alma was, you know, opened the door and then Alan came. And so she said, Well he's he, she's in bed. And Alma said, well, I'm going to get mom. And then Alan was like, Phew. you know, he, you could tell he's tired of the ball. He just like, Phew. you know. And then here comes Miss Adora down with her lovely old beautiful nightgown and, <laughs> and robe. Sashaying halfway down the steps. And said, well, can you just be, I'll be with you. Let me go make myself more presentable. So it's either they had a thing going on or they had have they do still have one going on because she acts different around him so and you could tell alan doesn't like it he doesn't like it at all so he so the sheriff talks to her door about the events of the town and um she said well i'm not going to cancel i don't want to cancel the events of the town we have done this you know for so long and she's like why he's like because i still haven't solved the case and so, you know, Adora just don't want to, she don't want to do that. She don't want to um, stop the event because of that. And she's in charge of it. So, you know, Miss Thing going to make sure everything runs smoothly. And she's going to get her way. So, they talk about the events and then they share a laugh or two, you know. And it's like she's happy around this sheriff for some reason. But I think there's some secrets that the sheriff and, and, and Adora knows about and don't want this other detective to the of a detective to un uncover something that's going on. Sorry for my little stutter moment, <laughs> but I'm getting excited. So, um, but Alan, he doesn't like this at all. And you can tell he doesn't like it. So Adora tell what, you know, Adora is sitting in her, um, living room area. And here comes Camille. Camille comes in and she's, looks and she's she gets startled because she didn't know her mother was up there waiting and her mother says to her you know i feel as if 
you know, I you blame me for whatever I've done this. Um, you know, say, trying to say that she thinks that Camille always blamed her for something and she felt like nothing was ever good enough. She wasn't a good enough mother. Even when she was a baby, she would cry. Well, Adora, that's what babies do. They cry. I, I just don't understand why you... Eat. Girl, please. And saying all these things. And gets up and walks towards um, Camille and tells her, you smell right. <laughs> and then goes, it goes, Adora is a mess. I, I tell you, she is a mess. So Alan, he confronts Adora about her selfish ways and her compassion for others, meaning her compassion for the sheriff. And she has none for him. And he is right. She doesn't have any compassion for her husband. You know, it's like she just, she's used to him there. It's like she just, he's just there for her when she need him to be. You get what I'm saying? So he is right. He feels some type of way. And I think that's going to send him to the edge. And again, why aren't they sleeping together? And because he always comes, is there something else that I can do for you, dear? Is there anything that you need for me to do? And she says no. And then he leaves and, you know, go out the room. So I just want to know, why aren't they sleeping together? So as, you know, it's coming down to the end of the show, at the end of the, the TV show, and they are showing different at, you know, different events going on. Alan is, what what bothers me the most is well, Adora's in her bed, you know, trying to get rest and make sense of it all, whatever she's doing. Um, Ama is out there skating around, you know, having a good old time, skating around in the dark, being out after curfew and all type of things. She's going to cause her own. But something is up with that Ama. I don't, I don't trust her either. She's a creepy little something. And, you know, Camille going through her thing. And then Alan, it shows him going through his thing. And he goes out on the porch and he starts to scream. That's where it cuts off at. But also, it also shows him goes and he goes into Adora's room after he done filled himself up with stuff to drink. Um, and it shows him going towards her and getting on top of her. I don't know if they're going to actually do the do. And then Camille is out there looking for her sister. And while, you know, it's just a whole mess. So this, this episode is really, like I said, each episode unravels more and more mystery behind this family. This family is dysfunctional. It's crazy. But I think the, per the person that's caused all this dysfunctional mess is Adora. I'm right now blaming everything on Adora. Because she is a pain in the behind and she is a hot mess. So if you watch this show and you, you know, let me know in the comments. Do you agree or do you don't agree? And then we can move on to episode five. <laughs> episode five will be up tomorrow sometime. So thank you so much for listening. And I will talk to you guys later. And this is a great show, you guys. I think you should check it out. You guys have a good one. Bye.